Good evening, everyone. Nice to have those of you who are with us here in person, and nice to have all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. So we'd like to begin our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science with a pre-service meditation. So for the next 10 minutes, I invite you to just get still in your seats, to close your eyes, and we're going to be playing the God song chant, which just repeats the mantra, God's the love that I am. And you can either chant along with it, or if you'd like, just let those words just keep flowing into your consciousness. God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am. And if you find your mind wandering, which it has a tendency to do, this is an opportunity to cultivate that sense of awareness of where our mind goes, just to become aware of your thoughts. Notice that maybe you're thinking about the past or the future, a sensation you're feeling right now. And then once you've observed that for a moment, just compassionately bring your awareness back to the mantra, to the chant, God's the love that I am.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body temple. It may help to just wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, shrug your shoulders, take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, open your eyes. So, once again, welcome to those of you who are here from the beginning and to those of you who have joined us during the meditation, both here in person and via Facebook Live and Zoom. Welcome to Reverend Sydney's first Wednesday evening service. <laughs> so, let's begin our service with our opening chant. God is in this place, led by our wonderful Jamie Lula and Sam Krieger. <laughs> God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. Love. Love is Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Sam. OK, so let's join together in consciousness as we once again turn our attention inward and join together in knowing that indeed God is in this place. God is in every place, in every being, in every situation, in everything. Because truly, that one life of God, that vibration of infinite love, infinite intelligence, infinite creativity, wholeness, beauty, abundance, joy, every form of good we can name or claim, is the vibration out of which all creation comes into being and that lies at the center of all that is, including each of us gathered for this service this evening. And God being in this and every place, I know God is unfolding magnificently throughout our time together as that love of all of those who are of service, as that love of coming together virtually and in person as a community, as the beauty and artistry and inspiration that flow through Jamie and Sam this evening. And I absolutely know that our beloved Reverend Sidney is a perfect vessel this evening for us to hear that message that we have come to hear, that God speaks to her in a way, through her, in a way that just touches our hearts, opens our minds, awakens us to that divine essence of our being so we can carry that vibration, that awareness of that goodness within us into our lives and to experience it more fully. And so I absolutely know that we just receive so many blessings throughout our time together. 
And so I give thanks. I give thanks to know that so much healing and revealing is occurring during this service. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is absolutely so in the mind of God. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm always happy to be here with Mark LaPonce, but welcome home, Sydney.
naked will you use me I would like to thank Jamie for doing my talk. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Naked. Oh, my goodness. So think about this. I stand before you, Lord, love, law, possibility. I stand before you naked. I've been frozen. Now I'm allowing for anything that might have stood in the way of my my discovery of who I am, my discovery of my connection with spirit, my discovery of love, anything like that, I allow it now to fall away, to dissolve away, all fades to God. This idea is so powerful. And by the way, we are celebrating this week, whether you're Christian or Jewish or whatever your, your path is, we are in the midst of the high holy days. Rosh Hashanah started on Monday. And we enter into, um, it, and it ends tonight. And then the time in between are considered part of that whole thing. In fact, I was doing some, some um, research about this. This is the third night of the 10 days of awe, A-W-E. I had never heard that description for the High Holy Days. Now, I, I'm not Jewish. I didn't grow up Jewish. As a musician, I've spent a lot of my life playing music for Jewish weddings and bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, so I always considered myself to be Jewish adjacent. But I've, <laughs> I've never heard that expression. I thought, wow, the idea that we are in the midst of days of awe, and you don't have to be ascribing to a certain spiritual path, a religious path, in order to celebrate that. But what if we woke up every day and said, I am walking this path because it is a day of awe, and I am a creature of awe. You know, I was one of the things I read was, if the year is a train, the high holy days are its engine, a delicate joy, blend of joy and solemnity, fest, feasting and fasting, prayer and inspiration, make up the spiritually charged head of the Jewish year. So here we are, the beginning of a new year, new Jewish year, and that calendar goes back thousands and thousands of years, and I'm, that's minister math. I don't do minister math. By the way, minister math involves Jewish calendars and cubits. I don't do it. <laughs> um, vanity math involves age and, and time. So in other words, if you're 50, 50 is the new 29. If you're 60, 60 is the new 31. So I'll do, I'll do vanity math. I won't do minister math. So, okay. So one of the first rules of being a minister is that when you decide what you're going to talk about, you need to be aware that your life will begin to demonstrate and illustrate, actually show up with that which you were deciding to talk about. So I thought, well, this will be fun. We're in the midst of moving, and we're buying a house. We sold a house, and we're going through all of this. And you know, we're, we're very spiritual people. We, we like to think of ourselves as very, we do a lot of ohm. You know, we're omi. We're omi. We're very omi. But there are those times when it's not real. It's faux omi. It's foamy, right? <laughs> do you know any foamy people? That's judgment. We'll, do, we'll talk about that later. Um, 
what was I thinking titling this talk, Sacred Chaos? Seriously? What was I thinking? <sighs> I have been working with a book lately by Richard Rohr titled The Wisdom Pattern. And it's a powerful book because he investigates the nature of change and not just how we react to it, but that there's actually, I'd have to call it a physiology of change that happens where everything, we're cruising along, life is pretty good, and then we hit a bump and stuff starts to get chaotic. And that's the disorder. Then from that emerges the reorder. So. If you don't know about him, he's a Franciscan, Franciscan priest who teaches primarily, quote, on incarnational mysticism, non-dual consciousness, and contemplation with a particular emphasis on how these affect the social justice issues of our time. In other words, he's one of us. <laughs> he's one of us. So this book is all about this idea and how change shows up, and there's this pattern. So we see this pattern all through life. It's in wisdom teachings, i.e. religion. It's in our bodies, it's in science, it's in evolution, it's in philosophy, it's in personal growth. And the basic idea is that we experience change according to this very predictable pattern of order, disorder, reorder, stability, instability, and a new stability. And I know that we all go through a lot of chaos and we wonder what the heck is going on here. But note that the book's title is The Wisdom Pattern, not The Chaos Pattern. It's The Wisdom Pattern. And if you think of it in terms of how we look at this and new thought, whether you have, uh, your origin story involves this church, Church of Religious Science, or it involves divine science or unity, or you have considered yourself to be an atheist or whatever it is, think of wisdom in terms of a capital W as a greater wisdom than that which the world shows you. Greater than opinion. Greater than mm -hmm, anything that can be measured or is transactional. We're just talking the wisdom that keeps the sun rising and setting. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom pattern. And that's what you and I are sourced with. That's what we are all about. So, you know, we can go from peace to predictability, to chaos in the blink of an eye. We can go from have a nice day to worldwide pandemic in the blink of an eye. Or as my husband and our 22-year-old son have been learning, we, go, we have gone from a calm and organized household to a maelstrom of boxes, moving vans, Airbnbs, and a neurotic dog, by the way, who's now on Prozac. <laughs> which she's got that in common with about two thirds of the country, I think. So, so it's a fascinating thing to look through this lens of order, disorder, and reorder when you begin planning a major move. It's fascinating to think about it when you're brushing your teeth, you know, but when you go into the big stuff, like a new job, a new house, all of that stuff, you know, there have been times when my husband, Charlie, and I have just wanted to curl up in a fetal position under my piano and, and send out for pizza and a lot of chocolate. Um, which is one way of handling it. It's the, not the most sustainable protocol, but I mean, you can do that. You know, we, and while we know intellectually and spiritually that our nature, our nature, the nature of, the, of life is change. It's expansion. It's expansion and unfoldment. We know that God is all there is. The only thing that matters is love, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Like I said, there are times we just want to roll over or start pawing through the freezer for cookie dough and dove bars and maybe, you know, are there some potato chips in the cabinet? <laughs> but I think it's a fact of life. And I believe that it's important that we know and remember, particularly because we have shown up here to be conscious. We chose to be here. Now, some of you might have been dragged a choice as well, believe it or not. But we need to remember that disorder is the necessary destruction of the old in order to make space and availability for the new. It's the necessary destruction of the old in order to make space and availability. availability. And I'm going to add willingness for the new. 
You know, I remember years ago reading that Pablo Casals had said, great destruction must always precede great creation. Of course, my response was, really, Pablo? It must, must it, must it? Does it have to? Can't we just have a gentle unwinding and then a loving, touchy-feely rewinding? No, not here and not now. You know, at some point in this church, I will, I will probably do a whole series on a, a thing called spiral dynamics, which will give some context to where we are in life and why change seems to be happening faster and faster. But just know that we are at a point where we are waking up, not just individually, but collectively. And that means that even though we'd like to have it touchy and feely and nice and soft and gentle, it's not always gonna be that way because we are at a point where when you wake up, you can't just lie in bed. You have to get up and move. You have to make some, some choices. You have to choose some direction. And so what we want to do is wake up and do it with knowledge. We want to do it with, with intention. We want to be guided. We want to know that we're fully connected and that, that everything we do comes from a, a high awareness of that wisdom. So, you know, we'll, we may have to get our touchy-feely from each other, but don't expect the winds of change to blow in as a gentle breeze with catering, massage, and Mai Tais. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so Ernest Holmes wrote, and this was in a textbook, the body of the universe cannot help changing. It can't help changing. This is what constitutes the eternal activity of spirit within itself. The spirit passing into form, creation eternally going on. Ah, crap, really? <laughs> it's always going on. You and I are the body that Ernest Holmes is talking about. We are the physical expression of the eternal activity of spirit. So like it or not, it's going on. So I think it's easier to get on board rather than to resist it, because we can fight it or else we can say, okay, what do I need to know? Because this creation, this change, this expansion, this unfoldment, this growth, all of it, is continually going on in, as, and through each of us. Richard Rohr explains it this way. Chaos often precedes great creativity. Darkness creates the desire for light. Faith actually precedes great leaps into new knowledge. Our uncertainty is the doorway into mystery. Wow, I wish I'd written that. I could use applause. But, um, <laughs> but it is. It's the door. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, I brought my, my committee here to applaud for me today, by the way. The doorway, it's the doorway into surrender, and it's the path to God that Jesus called faith. Now, whether you believe in Jesus or Buddha or Baha'u'llah or Oprah Winfrey, I don't care. It's that this doorway to uncertainty and chaos, this is the gift. This is the wisdom. This is the revelation. I remember one time reading where some, a story of a monk, a young monk or a trainee asking someone who'd been there a long time, I get so distracted when I meditate. And the older monk replied, the distraction is the meditation. The chaos is the wisdom. The chaos is the gift. It is the opening. You know, I didn't feel like that today. You know, we're in this temporary place of an Airbnb about five or ten minutes from here. And it's fine. It's, it's, it, there's room for the dog and for the cat, and there's a little yard. It's really not 20 square feet, but it felt like that this morning as I was digging through all my wrinkled clothes, and I realized I don't even have a hair dryer. I don't have an iron. I don't have an ironing board. All that stuff that I was trying to find yesterday, the dog's harness, oh gee, well there it is. I won't remember that tomorrow. <laughs> but, and I thought, when did he and I become the poster children for decisions which seemed like a good idea at the time? Because <laughs> we're all in. <laughs> it's a messy all in. But it's also an all in of great wonder, of great discovery, of great when we choose, laughter. And happily, we've been together, gosh, almost 23 years of marriage, 26 total. We do a lot of laughing. We do some yelling too, not as much as we did at first, but we do a lot of laughing. And it makes it much easier when we look at the chaos and say, oh, oh, that's the gift. <laughs> you know, I remembered, um, 
Elizabeth Taylor years ago when someone asked her, how did you survive all of the, all of the stuff you were going through, all of the, we'll call it manure. And she said, I just knew that with all of that manure I was in, there just had to be a pony somewhere. <laughs> so finding the sacred in the midst of chaos, disorder, change, and a global pandemic is a lot like looking for a pony. Anybody feel like you've been looking for a pony for 18 months? Yeah, I have. I have, absolutely. I don't even ride horses anymore. <laughs> but the only way we survive that is we choose to make all of it sacred. All of it is sacred, especially the manure. Years ago, Walter Starkey wrote a book called It's All God, The Fertilizer and the Flowers. It's all God. It's all God. There's no place where I stop and you start. There's no place where you stop and I start. It's all God. And by the way, there's no place where I stop and that person down the street whom I don't like or who has a bumper sticker on his car that I don't agree with. There's no place where we stop and we start. We are all God. We are all God. And that's part of the, dis, the discomfort of the disorder, but it's also the blessing of the reorder. When we remember that we are so much more than our judgments and our opinions, that we when we begin to fast from that, which is part of the, the idea of the High Holy Days, is to fast. Once Yom Kippur starts, there's 25 hours of fasting to precede that. So that when you come to God, when you, that you are clean and that you have done the inner work. You've done the journaling, the questioning, and the I am ready to turn from this. I am ready to release this. I'm ready to forgive this. I'm ready to ask for atonement or to work at at one moment, to become whole again, to become, you know, we are always whole, but to become aware, yet in a new way, a new strong way of my wholeness, to live from that, that's atonement, to look at our stuff, to own it no matter how icky it is, no matter how manure-like it is, and to own it and say, wow, that too is God, that too is God, that got me here. It might have gotten me to this place where today I'm down on my knees begging for anything that will feel like salvation or uplift or relief or understanding or peace, but it's God. It's absolutely God. We live our lives, if any of you are taking practitioner study or have, you know that we talk a lot about the micro, from the micro to the macro. And we live our lives as that. And I love studying this idea of life as a metaphor. <sighs> if God is the greater, the greater presence, the macro, then you and I are the form that that presence takes. We are the micro. So what is true about God is true about me. What is true about God is true about you. It's true about you. It's true about, no, not you, but it's true about you. <laughs> When the world, while the world is shifting, evolving, and moving through its, by the way, 13 and a half plus billion year changes and shifts, you and I are the, are the incremental changes. That's the micro. Our role throughout this thing called life is to be present on this journey, to be connected on this journey. And sometimes the only way I think spirit can get our attention is to put us in that place of change, to put us in that place of chaos so that we turn back into that place of peace and knowing, so that we remember, oh wait, there's a greater idea, there's a greater sense of peace. I remember that peace. I remember reading about it at least. I remember hearing people talk about it. Maybe I can have that peace too. Maybe that's mine. And as Richard Rohr talks about and teaches, that the way that we find this path to holistic and healthy, loving social justice and transformation in the world is through meditation, it's through study. And by the way, it's through connection, like we're doing here. It's through community. You know, we have been isolated for a long time. And I want to say it's great that we can gather online and use Zoom. And I've been using every platform there is, and I've 
upped my game in so many areas of digital technology. But don't kid yourself, being in the room and loving people, even if you can't touch them, there's an energy. There's a divine, powerful presence and energy. Now, we're all a part of it, whether we're not in the room or we are in the room, but how juicy, how juicy we get to be when we can look at each other across these masks and know that we are connected, that we are still love, that we are still God, that we are still whole, and that everything we need is absolutely within us right here and right now, just that we have forgotten it. We have forgotten it. You know, Dr. Mark talks a lot about the Bible being the story about who we are. And for me, that's such a powerful idea because I don't read the, the Bible. I know this is probably going to mess with the camera people because I, I don't know if I'm supposed to move around or not, but guess what? I move. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of walled off. So where was I going with this? But, thank you. Okay. So whatever your wisdom teaching is, but here's the idea. For me, it has been the Bible just simply because it's more of what we, it's the majority of what we study here in Science of Mind. It's not all that there is because Ernest Holmes took the greatest writings of philosophers and, and wisdom teachers and, and religionists and brought this all together, and scientists, by the way. But I look at the Bible and I read it as an allegory. For me, it's not literal. For you, it might be, and that's fine. But I like to look at not just the psychology that's involved and the ideas that are involved, but what are the metaphysics about that? What are the metaphysics? And this is where I get very, very excited. Adam represents our who and what you and I are living in this world and always, always trying to grow, to evolve from within and without into that place of spiritual awareness, moving from the human to the spiritual man or woman, that we are moving, we've already been divine. We are spiritual beings, but we so often forget that. So when we can move from that earthly attachment to whether or not stuff is going on that we like or that we have enough food on the table, but if we can just remember maybe for five seconds in a day, that I am part of a greater idea. There is that within me, which is divine, which is spirit, which is whole. This is the idea of the kingdom of heaven is within. You know, if the names in the Bible always represent psychological stages that we go through, but the places represent the levels and the experiences that we have in our relationship with God, our relationship with spirit, whatever you call God, whatever your word is, whether it's light, love, great spirit, Fred, I don't care, and it doesn't care either, by the way. This, this process, the places, Israel, a high state of consciousness, the Garden of Eden, that is, heaven is within, and the garden is when it is expressed out here because we have remembered it within here. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. So I don't even know why I went there, except <laughs> that this is where we go in our spiritual education, our spiritual awakening, our spiritual knowing that we are more than what we seem to be. I am so much more than this meat suit. I am so much more than that, that we are all here to recognize and to know as my friend Galen McDowell at the Johnny Coleman Institute always says, we are spiritual beings in a spiritual world having a spiritual experience according to spiritual laws. Anybody grow up hearing that? <laughs> Most of us did not. Guess what? You are born today, Rosh Hashanah. It's a brand new year. It's a new experience. We are made new. That is the idea. We are moving into a new year, a new birth, a new awareness. We can do it every single day. Transformation is not for sissies. It's not for sissies. But you know what? We don't do it alone. We do it together. We lean on each other. We talk to each other. And we, we engage our hearts. We engage our minds. You know, not for nothing. We have a, this border collie, as I referred to earlier. Her name is, is Bella. She's the sweetest, most loving dog in the world, and she hates change. 
She's become my avatar. She hates change. You know, Border Collies want to herd. It's their, it is their nature to herd. And so uh, several weeks ago when we started <laughs> filling the house with boxes and packing materials and stuff here and stuff there and, and people coming through to see the house and inspect the house. Now, this is the one that we, we moved from in Oregon as we sold to move down here. She just tapped out. She tapped out. She, it was as, as if she said, I can't herd these boxes. I, I'm, 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 I am out. I am fully not in this. And she stopped wanting to come in the house, which is weird because she's almost physically attached to me. Um, she stopped eating. And I know it wasn't because she was protesting um, the fact that, that Tibet isn't free. I know that's not what that hunger strike was about. She doesn't watch TV. We don't watch TV. But she, and she started pulling her hair out. Now, who hasn't over the last 18 months felt like you just want to pull your hair out with all of this chaos and change? Yeah, right? Well, you've got an issue. Well, we'll talk. So we took her to the vet, and her diagnosis was stress, depression, and generalized anxiety. What do you know? Here, Bella, have some Prozac. Now, listen, I have no problem with that, actually, because now she's got a tool. And we do believe here that you take the pill, you take the prayer. You take the pill, you take the prayer. This is what Ernest Holmes taught, that God absolutely works through doctors and through science. That's part of the unfoldment that we're doing. That's part of it. Oh, my gosh, we have technology. Look, at, look around you and see what we have here. This is God. That's God. That's God. That's God. That's God. It's not just God has a face on it or you or me. This is all God expressing. So the chaos of the last 18 months has moved us into a place of reorder and great, great wisdom and knowing that none of us had. Or maybe, maybe a lot of you did, but I didn't. I didn't, and I know that some of the, the awesome people who are in charge of our Facebook and our Zoom and all of the stuff that happens to make these services take place, some of them didn't do this at all, and they've become major, major goddesses and rock stars now because they know what they're doing and it's, it makes it possible for us to do this. So the ex experience of relocating here put me into a mantra and it was purge, pack, pray. Purge, pack, pray. So I started purging stuff, got rid of a lot of stuff that felt really good. Pack, ugh, that, was, that wasn't my favorite part. Because that's where you also look at stuff that you've kept and you say, when did I get this? Why did I get this? And why, for God's sake, four houses later, am I still carrying it around and it's unopened? <laughs> I am my stuff. I claim it, I am my stuff. I'm, materi I'm a material girl. And of course, pray. You pray, but I finally got that I had the order wrong. In this whole thing of order, disorder, reorder, I had to shift my order of how I was approaching this. So it became pray, purge, pack. Pray from the sweet consciousness of oneness and the ground of being and to align with infinite wisdom, which is always present to align with pure presence, which is what we are saturated with. We're swimming in it, guys. We are swimming in it. And it's swimming in us. And peace. Then purge. And how appropriate Rosh Hashanah, when we let go of stuff, we fast. We fast from that which would separate us from a high, mm, conscious, loving relationship with God and our divinity. So purge the ideas and yeah, the belongings. If they're not sparking joy, out it goes. It doesn't remind me of my sacredness, my divinity. It's gone. And pack. Pack the preciousness of love, sweet memories, laughter, compassion in this invisible, fabulous, beautiful tapestry of gratitude, which is what I spin, what we all spin when we meditate, when we contemplate, and when we take time to remember who we are. And if I'm in a hurry, the shorthand for all of it, of course, is pray. So let's do that now. Okay. 
<sighs> Once again, we breathe into the conscious awareness of who and what we are as divine sacred beings. Here as not just expressions and emissaries of the divine, but actual, actual models, actual creations, actual beings of God. Knowing that what is true about God is true about each and every one of us. We commit from this point forward to live from a shifted knowing, a shifted awareness, a shifted intention to always find that which will remind us to pray. And if it's pray, Purge and pack, that's even better. But we know that we have this beautiful light that is within us, and it is that which we share with each other and with this world. So I know that that which we have mulled over tonight serves each of us. It blesses each of us. It lifts us up into realms of healing and wholeness, into peace and understanding. It lifts us up into places of reconciliation and release. For truly, as we enter this awareness of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven within us, all that we need to take with us is our hearts, our open hearts, our awareness. And we do that. And I know that as we leave this place tonight, as we leave this place tonight, we remember, we remember that God is the center of all situations for which we set our intentions. We know that good is being revealed. We know that peace is being revealed. And in fact, in this moment, I invite you to, to, to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and for all beings everywhere. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. We bless this church. I'm certain that as we move forth into the world, we are a blessing in the world. And so we carry that light. We bless all churches everywhere, all paths to God, be it synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, tents on Vineland, all paths to God. This is God. This is God. We are God. We know that all paths are leading us to the same awareness of God, the same truth, the same love, which is that right where we are, God is and all is well. So with a full and grateful heart, I release this word into law. It is law. And I say, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I release, I let go, I let the Spirit run my life and my heart. Oh, amen. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Reverend Sidney. <laughs> okay, so this is the time in our service for affirmative giving. For those of you here in the sanctuary, as you exit uh, the sanctuary, there'll be boxes in the foyer where you can drop off your donations. Those of you watching at home, a reminder of the ways that uh, you can make your donations. We'll be here for about 30 minutes after service. Uh, pardon me, 15 minutes on Wednesdays. You have to call us fast on Wednesday evening. Um, 
to take your donation over the phone via credit or debit card. Uh, you can also go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and set up a one-time or a recurring donation. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. However you continue to give, again, we just got to keep telling you how grateful we are that we can keep coming together and do this together, thanks to your gifts. So let's hold our gifts to our hearts or set our intentions as we hold our hands to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Yeah. Bless it all. So as we start to bring our service to a close, I uh, want to begin by saying thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. Uh, out there in virtual land, uh, thank you to practitioner Liz Racy, who's holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, for Facebook Live support, thank you to Natasha Corrigan. Uh, our Zoom support team, Jim Reimers is our North Hollywood Church host, Diane Satterley, who's the Zoom host, and Alma Alvarez, also Zoom associate. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you all, uh, for keeping things going for us out there. Here in the sanctuary, as always, all those who are of service, Greg and Terry, who are here to usher us in this evening, Adam on sound and lights, to Doreen and Brenda and Blair and Nikki for all supporting us here technically, to our awesome music here from Jamie and Sam. <laughs> and well, my dear, what a beginning. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was great. I'm going to go out and create more chaos in my life. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> so uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, again, just a reminder of ways you can make your donations uh, out there in virtual land. Calling the church office, 818-762-7566 for about 15 minutes after service nhcrs.org forward slash give or texting eight to the word give to 818-457-3419. And again, we're just reminding folks that if you shop on Amazon and you join uh, Amazon Smile and uh, designate North Hollywood Church, we're actually listed as Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as a place for your donations to go every time you shop. We get 
a donation. So it doesn't cost you anything, and thank you if you are willing to consider doing that. Prayer with a Practitioner is available via Zoom, or for those of you who are here live, just come forward at the end of service, and a practitioner will pray with you. Uh, you can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org, uh, or for those of you here live, we have prayer boxes in the foyer where you can drop off a written prayer request. And you can also call into the church office and leave a message on uh, option number four on the phone menu lets you leave a message. So um, we check those messages every evening and the emails and send out all the prayer requests to our practitioners. Next Wednesday evening, we're going to be right back here again with Reverend Sydney. Uh, I'll be joining her uh, again. And Reverend Sydney's topic is for Yom Kippur. Atonement, forgiveness, and a really nice brisket. <laughs> the honoring of Yom Kippur holds possibilities for all of us. We own our stuff. We agree to fast from denying our divine nature. And we let the filters of fear and anger dissolve. How clearly we begin to see and how joyfully we start to live when we become willing to love. And the brisket, well, that's just common sense, delicious. Uh, so we hope you'll join Reverend Sydney and I next week, next uh, Wednesday. This coming Sunday, our grief support group uh, will be led by practitioner Carol Winokur on Zoom. Uh, that's at 1 p.m. and all are welcome. We remind you that our youth church is now open. We're welcoming youth of all ages at our 9.45 a.m. service on Sunday. So, you know, you heard about all the chaos and the boxes and all that. What else is Reverend Sydney doing now that she's, you know, on board officially? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Uh, she'll be teaching a Rising Strong workshop on September 25th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's going to be in-person only. It's inspired by Renee Brown's book, Rising Strong. And uh, Reverend Sydney's workshop will be a practical and spirit-led experience to lovingly explore the stories we tell ourselves about why we can or can't, are or aren't. And the cost of the workshop is $30. Oh, yeah, and then Reverend Sidney is going to start teaching the Essential Ernest Holmes class. Uh, that's for 10 Tuesdays, and that'll begin on September 28th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m., and that'll be both in person and on Zoom. And so this is one of our certificated classes with our denomination, uh, where students gain a holistic awareness of Ernest's thoughts and come to see that many of the questions about applying the science of mind were addressed by our founder himself at one time or another. So those same questions we've been asking ourselves, you can see how he asked and answered those questions. And cost is $245 if paid in full up front and $270 if it's paid in two installments of $135. And this is a prerequisite for anyone who's interested in taking practitioner training down the road. Um, let's see, we're also are inviting you all to join the fund so you could be uh, doing what Natasha is doing for us this evening as a Facebook Live host. It's relatively easy and it's a lot of fun. So if you'd consider doing that, if that sounds at all interesting, please call the church office and we can let you know more about it. A Zoom virtual patio continues before and after services as ways for congregation to congregants to stay connected um, while they're just still attending virtually. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m., seeing some familiar faces that I'm used to seeing on Zoom every morning. And so for information about all that's going on here at North Hollywood, you go to our website, nhcrs.org. I'm going to invite Reverend Sidney up Again, normally we would go into a benediction now, but I think we have a special treat that I'll let her tell you about. 
Um, many years ago in utero, Jamie and I met, <laughs> or just post utero, we were so young. And it was a practitioner graduation here when we were still in the tentuary. Someone's waving. Thank you. I thought you were waving the white flag of surrender. Like, it's enough, it's enough, stop. It's never enough. Anyway, so Jamie, this is, the, I, I asked him, I know that usually this is when we stop, but I went, I want to hear another song from Jamie. Do you want to hear another song from Jamie? Okay, so I'm breaking with protocol because apparently that's what I do. And he's going to do the song that he did at that graduation and rock it, baby, rock it. I done my time, I'm so tired, I give up on my simple night. It's not working, I'm no good, I'm in need if I only could find the spirit. It's spirit in the house. Lights just stop, I go through. Pull me over, said the man in blue. Son, you know what you done did. I said, yes, I ran a light over it. What's your hurry, why the race? Who are you trying to keep peace with? Take your time now, it's all right. Got your answer, you can't hide from the spirit. You can't you feel the spirit God in you? House ain't home, home is where Sam's alive when you want to dwell in the spirit. In the house, give it up for Sam Krieger. I said, Spirit. you in on a little secret. I like to dance, so there'll be times when you see someone like this, I'm, I can't stay in the chair. I just can't do it. I got to stand up and I got to dance. It's hard to dance alone, so if you ever want to, this is a blanket invitation, any time to get up and dance. Are you or am I? Benedicting? Okay. All right. Yes. I count on you. You're like my Greek chorus. <laughs> All right. Uh, am, I, what, am I doing? We're turning in within. Do we have another song? Do we have anything else? We're just saying goodbye and going. Right? I oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> Turn within one more time. Recognizing that we truly have been reordered and lift it up into that divine order 
which is the truth, which is the power, which is the presence, which is the absolute knowing that right where we are, God is, spirit is, love is, and all is well. We allow for a greater knowing. We allow for gratitude and we allow for the blessings along the way. Though they might appear to be chaos, we know you can't fool me, God. You're just in drag. This is good. And we are grateful. So I know that we are each blessed as we walk out this, this night, protected, surrounded, guided, guarded, and open-hearted. I am grateful. And so it is, together we say, amen. Blessed always, blessed always, blessed always on the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say. in God and say Amen.